You wanna look at a new GPU? Well, we got it for you, so just stay tuned. Nvidia is gonna lose $400 million and Intel thinks they're better than them. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And in today's top story, we have the pictures of the RTX 4080. I know. We're just a few weeks away from the announcement that we're expecting at GTC on September 20th. It's gonna be glorious. We'll be able to hopefully see Jensen hold it up to us. Potentially, maybe it'll just be about the architecture and then there's a launch event in October. You don't get your hopes up too much, but we've got the first look at the RTX 4080 Founders Edition. And there it is. Look at that. That looks a lot like the RTX 30 series, but a couple key differences. If you notice, the font is actually different, which normally in this scenario, you would be like, oh, it's Photoshop. That's wrong. That's not the right thing. That's not how an RTX 3080 looks, especially because you notice there's like two different setups here. Like the RTX is bold and the 4080 is thin. And then, but on the 3080, it's all the same and that's all good. But you think it's Photoshop, you'd be right. Except for the fact that NVIDIA recently redid their entire website to be in this new thinner font, which makes a lot of sense, I guess, to really go on ham on that. And if you look at the picture of the 4080, it kind of matches the new font that NVIDIA has actually put on their website. So could this be the real card? Yes. Could it also be a Photoshop? Yes, but uh, the fact that it matches up with the font that's on the website and not the font of the RTX 30 series gives me more hope that it's actually the real card and not a fake one. And it looks like based on this picture, this 4080 is only two slots. It's not a BFGP, B, BFG? PU, whatever NVIDIA called it. Even though we're expecting the power draw to be 340 watts, uh, they're gonna be able to actually keep it cool with the RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti's cooler. And then the 4090 will likely still be that triple slot massive behemoth. Based on previous rumors, this 4080 should likely be in the performance territory of a 3090 Ti or better. We'll obviously have to wait and see for NVIDIA's announcement to find out more. But NVIDIA's announcing that they are losing a lot of money thanks to the US government giving new export rules with regards to some of its highest end chips, not the RTX 3090 Ti, but rather their server grade stuff that they're actually shipping out. So the US export rules have updated it so that Nvidia needs an export license to sell high performance graphics processors, which can include their A100 and their upcoming H100 chips. However, this is actually a big deal for Nvidia, not just because the number of sales that they actually do in China, which Nvidia is speculating will cost them 400 hundred million dollars, but additionally, it could potentially prevent the development of their upcoming H100 chips because they actually need to send products to their partners in China to help develop the H100. And if they're not actually able to send these higher end chips for development, it could actually slow it down for future product iterations from NVIDIA. So they're not too happy about it, kind of complaining about it because I mean, $400 million is a large chunk of their business. I mean, for any company to lose $400 million in revenue because of one rule change would be really upsetting. AMD also being affected by this. However, they're not actually coming out and stating how much they might be losing about this. It seems like it's gonna be negligible because AMD's compute GPUs are not really sold in China as much as Nvidia is. Rather, they're focused on the US and the EU. So it does seem like AMD in China, they say it's a resource impact but it's not necessarily going to break their bank, whereas NVIDIA is going to have a huge, huge reduction in revenue from just not being able to sell in one country with their highest end parts for the servers, which they need to let their shareholders know as soon as possible, especially if it's going to impact this quarter's financial results. It's not going to be a good time for them. And it doesn't seem to be a good time for ARM or Qualcomm because ARM has launched a lawsuit against Qualcomm and Nuvia for breaking a licensing agreement. This is coming after Qualcomm use Nuvia cores in their Phoenix core design and in the licensing details that ARM gave to Nuvia for it. They said that it's not transferable to Qualcomm. They'd have to come out with an agreement of their own Qualcomm and ARM coming to terms on it, which they did not do. And so ARM told them to stop selling it in March of 2020. No more Nuvia licenses because you're not doing the right thing. However, Qualcomm continued to sell these Phoenix chips. Now ARM is seeking specific performance of the contractual obligation to destroy certain Nuvia designs, an injunction against trademark infringement, as well as fair compensation for 
the trademark infringement. So Arm trying to protect their rights, their trademark rights, even though Qualcomm is one of their major partners, they're still not shying away from taking care of all of this in court. And I'm gonna court you to watch crypto stunks because that's what's happening. Bitcoin down 1% to be just barely eking over 20 grand. When I started again, it was below 20 grand. It was in the 19,000 reason, but it has continued to climb upwards. Ethereum up ever so slightly to be at 1577 and Dogecoin up half a percent to be at 6.2 cents. Good segue to Reese talking about UFD deals. Go for it, buddy. Hey everyone, welcome back to UFD deals. We bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's Friday, the hot have been vanquished and these low prices are going next. Seemingly feeling the pressure from AMD these days, Intel has dropped the price now on their Core i7-12700K. Recently, they dropped the price on the KF and it seems the K version is following suit. With a very nice price of $369.99, it is currently 25% off. So if you're team blue and you're looking to pick up something that can hit 500 gigahertz ceiling, got you. And don't forget, you can find all these deals and more linked in the video description. I'm about to dissolve into the weekend, so I'm handing it off back to Brett to finish it out. Haha, <laughs> witty banter comment of something that I, I don't even know because we're in two completely different time zones and you film this while I'm sleeping and I record this before your day even starts. So good keeping up appearances. And in case you want to appear like a person who's doing important things, Lenovo's got just the thing for you. They've got the glasses T1. Look at those bad boys. It stuffs a 1080p monitor into those glasses. It has a USB-C cable so that you can plug it either into a phone or into a laptop so that you can use, use your monitor while on the go. So Lenovo is showing this off, saying that it connects with Windows, Android, and Mac OS, as well as iOS devices through a USB. USB connector and it has micro OLED technology at 1920 by 1080 per eye with built in speakers so that you can actively use it while nobody can see what you're doing on your glasses. According to the Tom's hardware person who actually got to try these, uh, it was not great. The resolution of the text, the fringing on the edges, not fantastic. And it uh, doesn't seem like it's perfectly ready for launch. I kind of like it. I kind of dig the idea of having glasses that are connected to my computer so that I can like sit in bed and then like play video games. On. It's like VR, right? But the, you could still see through it a little bit. I, I mean, it wouldn't be good for video games probably because of that it would probably be better for something like documents or doing something classified like what Kyler, what did classified people do? What, what did classified people do? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Lenovo, not likely to launch these in the United States. They're gonna be selling for China in late 2022 and no price really given except for their speculating it could cost for as much as $600, which I, I might try it. I kinda, I kinda wanna see it. But you don't have to pay $600 for DDR5 RAM because AMD is expecting that DDR5 could hit DDR4 pricing levels by the middle of next year. So they said that what we expect to see in the remainder of this calendar year is more aggressive movement from the memory partners to accelerate pricing declines, get DDR5 pricing closer to DDR4. And I think as we go into 2023, we'll see that gap narrow even further, potentially crossover as we get into the middle of next year. And boy, howdy, once you know it, AMD actually knows what they're talking about because contract pricing on DDR5 RAM has actually gone down 18 18.75% in the second half of July, whereas DDR4 only went down 13.19%. So DDR5 is still more expensive than DDR4, but what we're seeing here is that it's actually dropping faster than DDR4 is far for five. Which one? Five is dropping faster. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? And Intel is trying to say that they are better than Nvidia at ray tracing. You thought RTX meant that they are the kings of ray tracing? Mm -mm. Intel is better. So Intel talking about their A770, A770, 750 graphics cards and that the ray tracing unit that we have is particularly well suited for delivering real ray tracing performance. And you'll see that when you do ray tracing on comparisons with a 3060 versus an A750 or A770, we should fare very, very well with the follow up of, yeah, we're definitely competitive or better than Nvidia with ray tracing hardware, which is great and all well and good. But according to everything we're seeing, if you're not good on the regular games, the ray tracing is not like it's a, it's, the cherry on top, but if your Sunday is made out of dirt, 
it's not going to be an enjoyable experience, even if you got a delicious cherry. So fix the drivers first and then we can boast about ray tracing. But one of the cool things that's coming forward with Intel's upcoming CPUs of Meteor Lake is that according to reports, it's going to have a standalone media unit, which actually will eliminate the need for an integrated GPU in order to do things like quick sync, because that's going to be processed on the actual standalone media unit. So that's according to Intel in their Linux patches that that's going to happen. But some of the speculations surrounding this is the idea that Intel might be doing this, moving the most important thing of their iGPU, the media unit, which people use for a lot of acceleration, off of the GPU into the CPU as its own standalone thing. And that way they can actually sell off their graphics division, which has been a rumor that's been coming out that Intel's not happy with their GPU department. It is unprofitable and potentially likely to never be profitable according to behind the scenes reports. And this could be a preparation stage for that. So they keep the best feature of the integrated GPUs and then they get rid of the rest of the business. But Intel is saying that that is not true, that they are fully committed to the discrete graphics as well as integrated graphics. So Tom Peterson in interviews stating we're not going anywhere on our discrete business and our discrete business is the basic technology development that goes into the data center and integrated GPUs and following up by saying I feel like there's a lot of FUD out there and I just like to be clear we're not going anywhere. The thing I happen to believe Pat and I and Roger and Lisa and Ryan everybody is online on the idea that graphics is a critical technology to the client is a critical technology to the data center and we want to start competing in the mainstream area where our competitors are making a ton of money. So all three of those things are critically important for Intel, continuing on to say that most of their team is actually working on the next generation of their GPUs in Battle Mage, and some of their team is working on the further one, which is Celestial, and that a small group is currently still focused on Alchemist as the launch is now happening. So Intel, from their mouse, at least the marketing side of things, is saying, hey, we're not going anywhere, which is what the public facing uh, you know, face you would want to put on in case you are trying to sell to a big partner. You, you wouldn't want to make it sound like it is a dying business. So you try to make it sound like it's good and that way you can get the highest dollar for selling it off. I don't know, are they playing 4D chess matrix or are they actually being legit? It's always hard to tell, but you can tell when this episode of Hot News is over because it's right now. <laughs>